The ambush on Ezekiel's men leaves him broken in both body and spirit. But if there's one thing the Walker Apocalypse has taught us, it's that fortunes can change at any moment. It's the downfall of a king. On this week's The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 4, Some Guy. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of The Walking Dead. So yes, of course, spoilers, they're a-coming. Alright, so a very Ezekiel-centric episode today, and actually, so far, the best of the season. Each episode keeps getting better and better, and it was an excellent combination of, of tension and storytelling uh, and character work, really, I think, that sort of brought all of this together. A lot of different pieces assembling through this episode. Uh, so let's start things off with the beginning, uh, when we have sort of our flashback of Ezekiel getting ready for uh, this big assault. And the way they had framed it, I mean, with the lights and the way it looks like he's coming out of the shower for a moment, uh, I actually thought this might have been a pre-war, uh, a pre-apocalypse sort of flashback, so we might have been getting a little more backstory on Ezekiel. Um, but no, as he starts to get dressed and then he pulls the armor and everything, we can see, okay, no, this is, this is modern times. Um, but I thought that that was a, a, a great way. It gives us the idea, whenever we get that sort of focus like that, uh, that this guy's going to die. That this, we're doing a, a, a very character-centric focus because this is going to be the end to him. Uh, but as it carries forward, and especially we step, he steps back out into the rest of the kingdom, and we see the rest of his army also getting ready for this assault, uh, we can really see where this is going because we know what has sort of happened with at least most of these people uh, at, at this point. So what we're doing is getting our invo uh, emotional investment. We're getting emotionally attached to all of these characters. They're saying goodbye to loved ones, getting a keepsake, and, you know, kissing family goodbye. It connects all of us, uh, especially we have Ezekiel's big speech. And again, this is part of where he is coming from, because he was doing all these speeches last week, and yet I smile, uh, a familiar uh, refrain here for him. Uh, but talking about, yes, we are, you know, we are up against a great battle, but we will be there together and we will decide. And all the great, stirring, emotional speeches a leader does, and Ezekiel does it great. His natural flourishing language and, and choice of character really lends to that. And then just a beautiful transition as we get all of the, the kingdom kind of hugging him, and then the quick break into just seeing all of the bodies that are around, and all of the dead, and the resultant uh, aspect of that. And of course, still Ezekiel in the center, covered with his warriors, um, which protected him from that very massive 50 caliber gun. And that's another thing that was really shocking when we saw this is the size of the holes in everybody. I mean, really, this I'm surprised it just didn't tear through them and tear through Ezekiel, but I think what happened really is they sort of pushed him down, they got shot and sort of fell on him. So really kind of covering him up. Uh, but we get that rebirth moment as he breaks out of the bodies and gets to see kind of the horror around him and see the the fall really because he had just talked about not one of us is gone uh, and that's those are always the moment where fortune lays its hand in the other direction uh, and this he gets to see sort of the the cost of his hubris of that early celebration that everything was fine before they had finished really sort of clearing out and making sure of it so a very costly mistake uh, for Ezekiel and really just the, the first moments of seeing him collapse of, of that broken spirit. Now, one of the things this episode does really well, uh, and it starts right here as Ezekiel is sort of pondering and, and, and suffering the loss of all of his, his people, uh, is remembering that this is the Walker Apocalypse, and all of these bodies are going to start waking up. And now, especially because we have... Um, Ezekiel alone and wounded, that imagery of, of not only walkers getting up, but your friends, your comrades now awakening and coming after you, even in that slow, 
uh, pacing works because Ezekiel's injured. He can't just get up and run away. He's got to drag off, and each step that he's pulling, he is encountering more and more, you know, risen walkers uh, coming after him. So throughout all of this, I thought they, it w they brought the scariness, the fear of the dead back, and that's something that the show in some ways is kind of lost at points because our people have to get better. You know, Rick and the gang, they have to get better at dealing with walkers. They have to be less, less of a threat. They have to be, you know, more proficient in na navigating the, their world. We want to see that learning curve. But the downside is, is that the fear of the walkers sort of gets a little lost. And this really brought it back. This really showed, I think, throughout all of this, how that slow, methodical, never-ending, persistent walk and pursuit can be so terrifying. Because... Yeah, we have Ezekiel uh, wounded, but then he gets picked up and he gets a moment's respite before his last buddy, that he thinks at least for the moment, um, gets lost. Then we have the Savior come up, who also has to drag him up because Ezekiel is wounded. It's that slow pacing, and so we still get that persistent onset of, of that danger. Uh, now, there was, I have to say, there were a few points where I'm like, mm, you know, the pace of the dead seemed to be varying, especially when we got towards the end. We had that last little scene between the Savior and Ezekiel and, and how he's just constantly uh, berating him. Again, continuing this downfall uh, mentally for Ezekiel, you know, seeing his wounded, already being affected by that, then the loss of his next guy, and then we have uh, the Savior who is constantly telling him, you're just a con man in a costume. You know, you, 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 you don't, you know, just, just really pushing and pushing that particular edge, undercutting the idea of what he is, you know, making him feel more as, I am just someone who is posing uh, in this idea. Uh, but there was that, that, that point when they were having that last kind of final scene. Uh, the dead did seem to be like, shouldn't they have caught up to him by now or not? Uh, but it didn't matter because as they got close, we had Jerry come back. They knew he was okay because we hadn't seen Jerry's body. Don't see a body, they're not dead. Especially someone as imposing as Jerry. Uh, also, never really seen Jerry mad like that. Not bad enough to be cleaving someone in two with his axe. So that that was that was an awesome return. So we do have that sort of lift up for a moment of Ezekiel. But even then, when they're hitting their little moments back, we have Ezekiel talking about, you know, stop following me. I am not the king. And that dwells back to that little reflection point that we had with uh, uh, with Carol. I mean, he's talking about the fact of how deliberate that he is. That he is not somebody that just jumps into things. Everything is decided for him. And I think that's another reason why he might hold a bit more of responsibility. It's not like he was just, hey, I was doing a thing and this is sort of what happened. He reiterates how much he is decisive. How much he was deliberate about things. Even before he jumps in and saves Sheba. Uh, from that moment. He said, it was only seconds, but I paused to consider both actions. Which person did I want to be? What were the consequences of each? So he's not an impulsive person at all. So I think the fact that he had, because of that, because of his deliberateness, he is feeling a lot more of the weight of the loss and really judging himself a lot more. He has chosen to be this leader. He has chosen to put forward this face. He has chosen to make these decisions. And therefore, because he sees that he has intentionally chosen that, that the weight of those, uh, I think, is weighing a lot further on him. Yeah, and during that, when he asks Carol, it's like, were you always this strong? No, 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 Carol was not that strong. And, and good response to her, no, that she decided to. But also, the world had made decisions also. It's a two-sided thing. Now, any time you have Carol on the warpath, it is a thing of beauty. Um, and I just loved all of her sections. But I, I also love the insights that we got with the Saviors. Because when we saw that the Saviors were still in the barn and they were starting to take the gun down, all I'm thinking is, is why did they stop firing? Are they, did they just, like shoot everybody and just sort of wait for Ezekiel to come out and then let the walkers weigh up? I mean, that's kind of cold. Uh, that's apparently exactly what they did. I mean, listen to some of the background 
conversation. I thought they said for a moment that they might have run out of ammo, but maybe it was just in that room and they were packing it up in the other room. They seem to have plenty, along with a lot of guns. Oh my god. Um, but no, they did give the line that, no, they were just there to mess them up. They were just there to, to, to sort of break them up to create chaos. Um, so, yeah, kind of cool to watch all that downplay. Um, but then we've got Carol coming in, and we do get that kind of scary moment when she's surrounding the guns. The guns are coming from both sides. But no, it's Carol. Carol's a freaking ninja. Hiding up in the ceiling and then <laughs> taking out all of them. That was perfect. Um, when she follows them out outside into the, tr to, to the truck as they're loading up, when they were loading up and all right there, especially when the one guy threw his rifle over his shoulder, I thought that would have been the perfect time. A lot of them, but still... They're busy. Their hands are preoccupied. So when she waited, and then she finally, okay, let them finish loading up the truck. Smart. Um, but when the, she did finally attack, there were less people than there were before. So did she forget about the other two? Carol's not that dumb. Uh, but, you know, just circumstances. It's still, it's always good. I love always her deceptive technique. The scaredy Carol type thing, I'm sorry, I'll give up, I'll just do it just long enough so that I can take one of you guys and open up the dead behind you and have the walkers take you out while I hide behind the truck. Eh, it was just, it was beautiful. Um, but we also get the sort of Sophie's choice, Carol's choice in this case, for her, the mission is to get these guns. When she finds Ezekiel and Jerry behind uh, you know, she's got to make that choice. And you know, that was one thing that I really loved when we had her in the gunfight and we could see her getting shot at and then they jump over to Ezekiel when he's still with the Savior and we can hear the gunfire. It, it, you know, whenever they piece all these points together and have them really intersect nicely, I just, I love that, reminding us that all of these are happening kind of at the same time. Uh, and that's something that really works throughout this episode because we not only have seen that, but then of course Carol has to make that choice her decision uh, to go ahead and do that, go ahead and save uh, uh, Ezekiel and uh, and Jerry, and then when it seems like it's lost, no, the motorcycle sound, Daryl's motorcycle, which is perfect because at the end of the last episode, we saw that they were heading up to the barn where the guns had been left out. So it is a perfect, again, sync up of all of these disparate events happening up at the same time. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them in just a minute. We'll talk about uh, uh, Daryl and Rick's little uh, uh, Indiana Raiders Lost Ark car chase there. Um, but that final little bit, again, we still have the incessant pressure of the dead because Ezekiel's wounded and they're low on ammo and there's only a couple of them. That pressure, again, we're still being fearful of the dead. You can break them off for just a moment, but they're never ending. And we have the horde right there, or a horde. Uh, so it keeps that pressure on. Love the fact that we find out where old Melty Face was from the other episode. Definitely a toxic waste dump. Definitely a nasty place. Uh, and this is, of course, where we have Ezekiel finally lose it. Finally saying, give it up. Just, I'll fight them off. And Jerry, to his credit, I mean, even back when they were at the fence, uh, you know, he is just saying, you're my king. You just, I, I have to call you that. Uh, and here it's the same way. You're my king. That's the way it is. You know, Jerry doesn't, Jerry doesn't just let him fall. And that's part of the thing. Yes, Ezekiel has chosen these things, chosen to be the king, chosen to make these, these, these decisions. But he forgets that his people have also chosen to follow him. And I think that's really where Jerry is, is, is putting down that point right here, is that it, he doesn't use it in so many words, but that's... People need someone to inspire them, to be led. Even if you are choosing, yes, I know that you're not an actual king, that you, you know, you're a zookeeper uh, and you're just putting on effects, but you inspire us, you lead us, you generally make good decisions. You are someone that I would agree to follow. And that's really what Jerry is. You know, Jerry is someone who is, I mean, it's just, just awesome. He really says, thanks for being such a cool dude. And it's just, you know, it's Jerry. He's just a center of hope and joy. Uh, but that reinforcing moment of that, no, you are my king. That's what I have to call. And then the final sacrifice by Sheba. Because, again, a game's full circle. We have talked about 
uh, when we were talking about Ezekiel's deliberate choices to go and save Sheba, here you have almost the opposite, less deliberative and more an instinctive choice from Sheba's point to jump in and protect and to sacrifice herself uh, in order to save Ezekiel, which is kind of a final heartbreak for him, of course. Uh, which is why when he finally does walk through the gates and he returns. And then, of course, we have, again, the other side of that scene. All the families said goodbye at the beginning of the episode, and now here at the end, the families gather around as just these last three survivors wander into the gate. No, there's nothing to be said. There's nothing he can say. He's certainly not feeling it. How many have lost, how many lives have been lost, have been sacrificed to protect him, in his mind, and that type of alone mindset I thought was perfectly phrased as we don't have any dialogue. And the last bit is we see him from the distance walking back to his throne room. It's just the quiet sound of him walking. Nothing else, just each step, step, step. Alone, quiet, by himself, isolated which is exactly how he feels. And the big Daryl and Rick uh, car chase, uh, that was awesome. Again, another great transition there done just with sound as we see the truck running out and the quietness and the slowly buildup of, motor of motorcycle sound and boom, there goes Daryl and Rick right behind him. Nice back and forth, I love, I mean, once the machine gun pops out, seems like Daryl was down. Uh, a little bit unbelievableness of that 50 being fired at Rick in the truck and him mostly just being able to swerve out of the way, but that's all right. It's an action bit. I'll go with it. Uh, still had the great feel of the distraction and then looking up and seeing the walkers there and that's going to distract more. And then Rick's blocking, being right in front facing down the machine gun and then zooming out of the way and it's Daryl right back, right up behind him, blocked by Rick so he could take the shot off. I mean, Really just a well-orchestrated scene. A lot of moves, a lot of dynamics, a lot of changes back and forth. Uh, then, of course, we have the Rick jump onto the truck and the stab and throw him out. Again, very, very effective. He pulls out a gun. Well, in close quarters, knife is better. Stabby toss out the truck. Uh, and then, the, the again, in a very Raiders-esque feel, as the truck goes over the edge, we have Rick pulling himself out having just leapt in the nick of time to get out of there. It was, just, it was just a wonderful dynamic. Again, it was fun. It was invigorating uh, having, the, having them show up right at the perfect time uh, and successfully capture the guns. Any information? Maybe they'll get out of the guy. Maybe not. Again, having to find out if he's still alive. But a great bit. And, of course, wonderful uh, commentary back and forth by, <laughs> by Rick. And Daryl, Daryl's just like, you, you look like shit. Yeah, thanks. Just jumped out of a truck, saved all of this. But uh, thank you. I'm glad you're commenting on how, how good I look. I love those two together. All right, just a couple of small things. Uh, one, in the speech uh, in the beginning where Ezekiel's giving it in the flashback uh, before they flash forward to all the dead bodies, he says a line that really kind of caught my ear. I thought it just had a wonderful sound. He talks about a bastion of life in the land of the dead. That's just, I mean, it's perfectly poetic for Ezekiel, but man, that's just, that, that creates an image in one's mind. Just nicely said. Yeah, the mysterious toxic substance. I uh, was wondering what that was. I just saw one shot out of barrel where it actually just says dangerous substance. Okay. Um, doesn't really clarify things, but, I mean, dangerous at least, and face melty. Ezekiel's final comment in the midst of For Sheba's Sacrifice is all is falling down. The title of this week's episode, I'm Just Some Guy, uh, I think is, is, is kind of appropriate. Again, this is an introspective view pretty much of Ezekiel and where we see him coming from being just uh, uh, the zookeeper, uh, making deliberate choices to lead, and embracing those leading men and then seeing the consequences and downsides of that. Now, he was right in that first speech when he did talk about, you know, uh, there's going to be blood, there's going to be a loss, um, while later on he thought that no one else should fall. That is, that is the point of a leadership, and then maybe it's something that Ezekiel hasn't really 
encountered. Uh, because most of the people that we have seen in our, in, in our travels here, Rick's group and all of them, they have had that loss. Rick has been in that position of thinking that he's on top of the world and have his knees cut out from underneath him. And I think several of our characters have several times potentially over the past eight seasons. So for Ezekiel, this is kind of a new experience versus the more weathered leaders like Rick who understand, yeah, you can go from the high and you can go right down to the low. And the fact is it's not your deception of the people around you. That's just what life is like. The choices, like Carol said, that life makes. The choices you get to make then is how you deal uh, with the repercussions, what you do afterwards. All right, so I think that pretty much covers everything. I mean, again, it's just a really tense episode. Great character work. The, the, the kind of focused time frame of what is going on, I, I, I thought really it kept the tension up. And again, really we're making the dead scary again. They are a threat. We are putting our characters in circumstances where that ever-present, unrelenting uh, uh, force coming after them uh, is still something to be feared. And I thought they did great choices to kind of keep that alive. And then also give us this nice, like I said, Raiders chase, you know, excited moment. We have the highs of the success and obviously the lows of the loss of, of all of those warriors and kind of Ezekiel's psyche at the moment. So the war continues on next week. Can't wait to see what else they bring us. So if you did enjoy this review, please go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, comments, throw those down in the section below. How do you think the season's going? I know there's been like some joys and some not so excitements there. I think each episode has been getting better and better. This was by far my favorite. What do you guys think? Throw your thoughts down in the section below. Now you can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Darren Jakes. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It's quick, it's easy, it doesn't cost you anything. Do so by clicking my face right here. And I'll go ahead and throw up our couple of latest reviews right up here and you can check those out. So that's it for me. Thank you for joining us. I'm D. And I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.